sometimes our applications need to notify customers or send messages via text message, email, do certain work that we don't want to happen in production, or rather, we only want it to happen in production. Either way, it's really easy to skip this if you're just running it in Visual Studio or you're just running it in a test environment. I'm going to show you a couple tricks to make that happen and it's going to make your life a lot easier. Unless you already know it, of course. Now this here is a simple uh, .NET 6 console application. And all I have here is three different methods. And I'll just run it real briefly before we show you how to avoid things to show you. It actually just prints three statements, string generic work, production work, and more work. And as you can see, the production work is in the production work method. It returns zero by default, because uh, I don't have a return 55 or anything like that. So if this was in a console, if this was in a scheduled task, it would return zero. So everything looks good. Now let's get started. So the first way is with the breakpoint. If you're in Visual Studio, you could set a breakpoint but then drag the cursor. I'll set a breakpoint on do production work because I don't want it to do production work. And I'm gonna hit F5 to run it. I hit my breakpoint. I'm actually gonna click on the yellow arrow and drag it to the next statement and release it. Now I'm gonna hit F5 again. And let's look at the output. It did generic work and it did more work, but it didn't do production in between just as we wanted. Pretty sweet, right? Now, sometimes you're not in Visual Studio. Sometimes you've hosted a debug version or a custom configuration version that's not release. And it's your, say, your staging or test environment. No problem. So you won't be using breakpoints at that point. But what you might want to do is use the preprocessor if debug or if not debug and then hashtag end if just like that as you can see it actually made it gray it's letting you know it's not going to run it and just to finish up this point before you move on to the next one there's also an else if so you could do if it's debug we will do our debug code hashtag else we would do the production work I said else if, but it's else like that. So let's go ahead and generate this. Control dot generate method. And let's move it down for clarity's sake. Down with the other methods down here. And we can say console dot right line doing debug things. So I will run this. I should see the debug, but not the production. Great. Now let's put the opposite of that in there. Let's make it release and run it, F5. Uh, you always get this warning when you're debugging using the release configuration. Uh, and normally when you're debugging using release configuration, it's because you forgot to switch it to debug. But I'm going to hit continue debugging because I do want to run it in release. And there we go. We got some production work. Move on to the next topic. This next one that I'm going to show you is actually one you could put when you deploy your code as well as when you're running in Visual Studio. So I don't know, a lot of people like to use the curly braces in their if statements to keep things clean looking. So we'll do that here. Okay. So in this case, what we're looking at, and you can actually remove system.diagnostics and do a control dot and move it into your usings. So what we're seeing is exactly like it sounds. Is the debugger attached? If you're running it from Visual Studio, the debugger is always attached doesn't matter if it's in debug or release. But the beauty of doing it this way is that you can deploy your code to, vi to a production environment, leaving it in release mode, and then do attach to process 
and then this will be it. So if you're having trouble with something in a production environment trying to figure out what it's doing, you could have some console write lines here, some additional logging to XML, additional logging to database, whatever it is that you did not want to do in production. Maybe send some emails, some text messages to yourself about some of the details behind the scenes. I'll show you now how it works. So if I switch to debug, and I hit run, it'll say, hey, it's doing debug things. If I switch to release and hit run, it's going to say the same thing. See? But if I switch to debug or release and I just build the thing, and then I go to my bin folder and I run it without using Visual Studio, I should not see this either way. It'll say running production work in both cases. Here's my bin folder, here's debug. If I was to run the XE here, if I was to run the XE here, which I probably want to put a console.read line at the end, or I could do a terminal here, and I could just run data vids.x. Oh, I need to do a dot slash data vids.xe. See, it says it's doing production work even in the debug folder. Now check this out. I'm now going to attach the process, which should move it on to the debug section. So in order to do that, I need to have either uh, a pause of some sort, like a thread.sleep, or I could put something waiting for input. I'll do waiting for input. So let's do var abc equal to console.read. And that'll pause the application. So let's build this in debug mode. And we're going to build it in release mode to put it in both folders. Now let's go back to that folder. Let's go into the bin, debug, .NET 6, terminal, dot slash tab. Oh, ran right past it. There it is. DataVids.exe. There, it's waiting for input. If I press return, it'll go right on to the next line. It'll say doing production work. But while it's waiting for me to press return, I'm going to attach the process. So let's do, I believe it's debug, attach to process. Okay. So you should be able to find it in here. In my case, the executable is called DataVids. So if I hit D, there's DataVids.exe. Click that, and we'll click Attach. Now, normally, you'd have some breakpoints assigned. Why don't I go ahead and stick a breakpoint on here? If you're not familiar with Attach to Process, you need to load the same version of the code that's running. I'm now going to jump back in, and it should be a debug version of the code should be. I'm going to jump back into my console here. I'm going to press return. Ah, hit my breakpoint. Hit F10. And it gets to the debug code, does not get to the production code. Doing debug things. Let's try that with the production one just so you can see it. Typically, you don't want to debug. Typically, you don't want to debug code that is not built in debug mode because you'll get less information, you know. I'm going to go and change directory, directory of release. And we'll do data vids. It's waiting for input. It's attached to process. Debug. Attached to process. Look for data vids. Attach. And we got our pop up again because we're debugging release mode. Go back to our console app. Press enter. And it worked. Did not hit our breakpoint because it's release and we were attached to process with release, which is not optimal, but we would have still hit this method. So we could have still executed some additional logging of that sort.
Now take your finger, put it on your mouse, and click the subscribe button. You know you want to. It's going to make your programming better. And if it doesn't, it's because you haven't asked me to build the right video. Just click it. Data vids out.